Ever since I was small, I would say in my teens, I was um, not satisfied with the usual information that people were giving me, like you got to do good in school and you got to be, you know, doing well in life. I was looking for something deeper, but I didn't know what that was. So because of that, I was a little bit um, sad, wondering what that might be. And everybody else seemed just fine. It was just me. And so I started reading pretty much anything I could find, which would tell me, here's how you can discover it. That began the journey and really led me to some incredible teachings from many wisdom traditions and led to practices I would do, such as meditation practice. And so all those things I had read about, now I could start seeing it in my own experience. And it, for a long time, it looked like nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm never going to find it. And then suddenly it started opening up. My regular job was continued to be an engineering job in software design and development. I enjoyed what I was doing there, but at the same time, this was a deep desire and passion. I would usually not talk about it at work at all because it's still somewhat uncommon and unusual. And I didn't want people to think of me as some weird person at work. You know? <laughs> so I was like, you know, better not to talk about this. For a lot of people, they look at spirituality as uh, you have some problems in life and you are troubled, so you have to go there. Uh, for me, it was never like that personally. It was always clear that this is the real thing. This is the true thing and everything else I'm just doing this and that. It's not going to add up to anything. We are in this strange hypnotic trance and we're going about doing everything. Shopping, social events, job. We're going in this trance. We don't even know it. We are very much caught up in goal orientation and ambition and achievement. And how do I get there? What are your plans? What's your strategy? How, how are you going to do it? This is such deeply entrenched belief that when we start talking about beingness, people quickly start thinking that you are talking about just sitting around doing nothing and being not productive. And how are you going to get anything done? Who's going to pay the bills? Who's going to pick up the kids? How is all everything? How is the world going to operate if you're just sitting around being? which is obviously a misunderstanding of what true beingness is all about. It's actually who and what we are most fundamentally. And we have gone away from that slowly, 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 because we've been caught up in our minds. And the mind operates in a certain way. It's a very useful tool. But if you start using it as the primary tool to navigate through life, you get into trouble. That's why we find so many people are deeply unhappy. They are doing a lot, but somehow it's, it's not adding up. Everybody's just talking about vacation plans, career plans. We have this external orientation that we feel anything I want, I will obviously get it out there. So I better look there, otherwise I won't find it. And the alternative is when we start going within. You would think it would be great, but in fact, you feel uncomfortable going within, especially in the beginning, because you've been avoiding going there and it certainly feels uneasy and uncomfortable. And it's like, well, let me check my phone. Let me check my latest emails. One more way to not go within. A lot of the things that we've been avoiding all these years, we start going within and they're all waiting for us. So it's all like, can you please pay attention to this emotion that you didn't deal with, this anger, this resentment, this guilt, this fear, they're all there. So we start going within and we're like, ooh, this fear, I've been avoiding it for so long, I don't want to deal with this thing. It's so easy to say, this fear, this anger, this resentment, oh, it's because of this person that I, is from the past. It has nothing to do with me, it's this person. 
So what can I do? There's nothing I can do. It's really that person who needs to come and apologize to me. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the apology. <laughs> so that is hilarious because the fact that I have that fear means it is my job. And we feel like, I don't want to deal with that. That's just, it's going to be not fun. It doesn't seem pleasant. Let me do some, let me go for a walk. Let me go for a movie. Let me go shopping. So we keep perpetuating that trance. So we can continue like that forever. And really what happens is something happens along the way that is very disturbing. An adverse event that, for some people might be even traumatic. It's too much. It's saying you have to deal with this. In that way, it's actually a blessing. You know, so many people you hear all the time, I was in a car accident, it was so terrible, I almost died. But now, five years later, I look at it as it completely changed my life. I started reading different things, I started listening to different things, and internally I started going deeper. I realized my job is meaningless. I'm going to make some big changes in my life. The transformation starts happening for many people from an unfortunate circumstance. But we do not have to let that be the way to make us change. We don't need a rude awakening, you know, a wake-up call, you know, as, it's, it's, as we might call it. We can use the small things going on to remind us of that deep sense of fulfillment, peace that is within us. And sometimes it's with nature. You look at something beautiful outside, the ocean, the sunset, you feel, wow. It's because we have touched something inside. The sunset was a way of us, for us to go inside. So many of us are so used to give me a three-step plan to get there. We want that. And then as soon as we get that, we say, well, but I don't have time to do it. <laughs> so there is a, I have this to do, that to do, and now you're asking me to do more stuff. I, I would love to do it, but I don't have time. So we get into this trap. And, but if I tell you, you could go there directly. You don't need to do anything. It's simply something you settle into while your body and your mind are going about whatever it is that is going on. So you can be, say, a high-performance athlete. You know, they are hitting the tennis ball or running or swimming. They are executing a very high-performance external action, but internally, they can very much be in the state of being. In fact, if you ask some of the athletes, what is the best performance they ever did? It was when they were inside internally being and doing whatever the sport they are good at. Some of them might call it as I was in the zone. In the zone is another way of saying I was in that good sweet spot where I was internally being and externally it was just happening. I was just playing the piano and a beautiful performance happened while I was being and playing. So for somebody looking at it, they might say, oh, you're playing the piano. You were obviously doing something. But the player is not. They are actually in that state of being. These examples are not exceptional examples. In fact, they just prove that all of us can go into that state of pure being. For some of us, we are so used to doing this and that, it's nice to sit quietly and become friends with this being state. And this could be through some meditation practice, which I think is absolutely a good place to start. Even I'm talking about five minutes of meditation. And by meditation, I don't simply mean you have to sit full lotus, eyes closed in some remote mountain. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying sitting on your couch, just relax and put away all the gadgets and just stare outside a window and just don't engage with any thought that's going to come up. Just relax and notice. And then you truly discover what being is about. Then you can get up 
and you can believe it or not you can go to your corporate job you can be there in your corporate board meeting and be fully present fully engaged while internally you are in the state of being so you stay out of the way and beingness happens you can do that by dropping everything that's floating in your consciousness begging for attention and trying to say this is me think about me talk about me try to do this all of these things including limiting beliefs patterns conditionings fears analysis all of these things if you could just for a moment drop it all drop everything and say i want to go to the pure state of beingness of my own true self my own infinite self and you drop everything you're right there this is as simple as it gets and this is something you could do any time it's just simply you could say internally resting as you tune into deeper aspects of yourself you may find inspiration to pursue certain things it could be in your career it could be in relationships for me at one point it was about starting my own software company since i already had a comfortable good corporate job it would be sort of very unconventional to leave that things are going well why do you want to leave that and instead starting something which is fraught with risk and uncertainty but there's only one thing i knew i have to do this even if it fails because there was absolutely no sense that if i leave this corporate job i start a company it will succeed no chances are it would fail and i knew that very clearly but i also knew i had to do it so i made that leap this was almost a couple of decades back to leave the corporate job and the way i told myself is let me at least try this for a couple of years and you can always go back and you can always try other things but i should at least try this for some time as i started it felt right it totally felt right and that to me was all i looked for there was no customers the product was not ready but it felt right and this is key you have to keep going trusting in that as things turned out it also was successful and and grew to be a successful software company but the reason i mentioned that is there is a certain element of taking risks which if we are a finite self the risk feels like it's too much oh i don't want to take that risk because uh, of so many things i have to give up but as you discover your essence the risk does not feel as risky it just feels like natural and yes there might be some fear there can be some apprehension that's fine but you feel fundamentally like i have to do this to be who i am i have to express in this way that becomes the motivating factor you let go into the unknown and the more you get into this beingness the more you will see it's not about you trying to make something happen that way of thinking slowly goes away you can completely let go into the flow you will start seeing that you have a much better time with life because you're just being yourself you're enjoying it now if you're wondering but will i do a good job i know i have an important job i am a stock trader i am a surgeon i am a an analyst you know i need to be thinking well in fact and this was a journey for me as well i could see that for example i'm presenting before an important group of people you would think this is very important i better be thinking i better be very attentive i found that if i am in the state of flow in in resting internally in the state of being the presentation is 100000 times better people are connecting i'm just using the perfect words i am having a great time they're having a great time this is how life was meant to be is what you see that's the key 
instead of choosing to control something that is in your field of consciousness, you choose to rest in your inner state and let the universe orchestrate the details. It's not like you're checking out. You are very, very actively present, but not in a way that you are trying to control and push it in a certain direction. You are present in a way where you're simply holding the moment as you are fully present, holding whatever is there in front of you, amazing things happen. Your perceptual field changes dramatically. What you are noticing around you goes from simply being a very just physical reality to something subtler. Things like intuition is not something you've got to go try to grab a piece of information from somewhere. Intuition is another very natural aspect of flow. When you're in flow, you find that whatever aspect of truth is needed in that moment will arise within your consciousness. And you don't even consciously try to access a piece of information and then say, oh, I am going to now do this. You don't even get in the way. It's part of the flow. Intuition, connection, synchronicities, all those flow through you as you are just being. And your highest purpose, your highest aspirations are all being taken care of. This is the beauty. So we normally think, I need to know my life purpose, then I can plan, then I can take decisions, and then I will make it happen because I really want to live a good life. You go from that sort of way of thinking to really a continuous state of flow, letting go, yielding, being open, being receptive, being connected, getting out of the way, dissolve to the unknown. This takes care of everything. And it's absolutely amazing life that you can live. Somebody might say, how do you do it? What's your plan? What's your formula? What is your secret? There is no secret. It's simply being you is the secret. Many people, as they're becoming conscious, you may be asking yourself, what is my purpose for being here? In a sense, you could say, we all have the same core purpose for living. To recognize the deeper truth of who we really are. You start seeing that this body itself is something so fascinating. You can look at it like, and say, this, this body is something I'm wearing. Because who I am is way beyond this physical appearance. Similarly, you can observe your mental activity. Initially, it feels like I am these thoughts. But as you observe these thoughts, you start seeing them go by so clearly. No matter what mental activity is going on, I am beyond that. So I am beyond all of these things. That is starting to get closer to your true nature. Not this finite self, which has a name, which, has, which lives in a certain place. As you say, well, I'm beyond all these things, beyond all these things, what am I? You start seeing this undefinable thing that you are. You notice that it does not have a location. It does not have a particular spot in time. It is just present. That's all you could say. It's, it just is. It's not that we deny these physical finite aspects of our being. They are very precious. They're incredibly beautiful. Our personalities, emotions, thoughts, our physical connections in this world, absolutely beautiful. But when we confuse that as being the exclusive reality of who we are, that's when life experiences will try to remind us that you are more than this. And those life experiences, we will perceive them as challenging. 
but they are all really gently reminding us that you are something much more. We are not this finite self trying to become essence. We are essence self living through a finite form. I know that I am going to survive and thrive beyond this reality. That's a deep assurance. The best insurance policy you can have is that inner knowing of who you really are. I do not have to worry about anything. Even if everything crumbles, it's still okay. I'm going to be fine. You start seeing death very differently because you do not die. And what you see is that simply one aspect of your being, which is the more finite, the more manifest, the more physical aspect is going to stop functioning. But the deeper levels of your being, energy, light, consciousness, essence are perfectly fine. It is merely a transition from one state to another state and who you really are stays intact. How do I live in this world while keeping this beautiful state of beingness? Because when I meditate, I feel all blissful, but then I go to my job and or wherever, and it's not like that. So integration is how can you bring all that into every moment of your life? This is where you end up dealing with fears and limiting beliefs that you may have hiding somewhere in your psyche. You know, why is my boss so difficult? Why is this coworker giving me a hard time? We try to analyze life situations while being entrenched in a certain limited reality. The point of that struggle is to show you that that's not the best place to tackle it. In fact, if you shift to a higher dimension of reality, you will find things are more fluid. The lower dimensions or the more manifest dimensions, they are more rigid and they are more transient. They come and go very fast, but they appear like they, they'll stay there forever. If I look at my fear and I'm this small human being having a finite self, that fear to me is scary. I want to just run from here. It's like, oh, this is, I can't deal with it. Poor little me, you know, this is, I can't do it. But if I get in touch with my essence self, my higher self, my true self, my infinite self, if I bring that through my finiteness, now I look at fear, it's there, I am here, also here. I am an infinite being of light. Looking at this fear, it's so, it's so cute, it's so funny, it's so strange. I'm not scared of it. You just hang out with it. Don't run away from it. It's like diffusing a balloon. Suddenly it collapses. So this is the key. Every time a fear or anything else that, that bothers you, it is an artifact, it is a construct, it is a contrived, distorted perception from unresolved energies of the past. In other words, it is not real. <laughs> so when you bring something true and real and put it in front of something which is not so real, who's gonna survive? The real thing always survives. You go through this process again and again and again and again. So don't feel disheartened, don't feel discouraged. If you feel, you know, I did this for two years and again I had this fear come up. It's okay, you're still making progress. Each time it comes up, it is not quite as strong and you are getting stronger you will see that there nothing can arise in your consciousness which can prevail over who you truly are. It's just that we have gotten caught up with only one aspect of our being. It's not that this physical aspect is not real. 
it is just relatively real. But there is something more fundamentally real. And ultimately, that is more powerful. And ultimately, that is more closer to the ultimate truth. This is important because you can engage with reality in many different ways. The reality will respond and everything is possible. And wouldn't this be fun? Oh wait, this would be fun. Oh wait, this would be fun. It's the joy of playing in creation becomes more obvious. And somebody else might come to you and say, oh my goodness, I'm having these problems. Can you help me? And you want to tell them, try to open up what you're seeing and your reality will immediately be different because you will see a beautiful array of possibilities and you will not see the problem as this problem that you're stuck with. You will see it as another beautiful way that you can engage with reality. Most of the time we don't take dreams too seriously. It's just, we remember it a little bit and then we let it go. Well, you can actually work with dreams as a way of going into these realities. Because during the dream state, we are in a much more fluid, consciousness-based reality, interfacing with energy planes and light planes. So there is an opportunity if you maintain a little more consciousness and a little more awareness and more presence. It's not about controlling the dream. It's about participating in the unfoldment and the flow. As soon as you wake up, write down whatever you remember. By recording it, you're doing two things. You are saying that you care about that information and you are also capturing certain details. Now what happens is when you go back to sleep and your next dream, you will be more aware. It's almost like part of you knows that you are going to recollect it and these lucid dreams can give you remarkable insights about what you need to pay attention to, about what direction you want to take and more importantly, they will take you closer to your inner being because you realize that no matter what's going on, because you know in dreams anything could be happening, no matter what's playing out, I am not this dream. This insight, if you bring it back to the normal waking state, it gives you dramatic power because you come back to this, oh, this crazy thing is happening, it's okay. You do not get disturbed by it. You don't get overwhelmed by it. Instead, you can be looking at it with a smile. Even though something crazy is going on, I am beyond it. I am bringing that quality of beyondness not to disappear from here, but to be a powerful presence in whatever reality I am in. Embodiment is a critical piece of the overall journey because without embodiment, you end up in a disconnected, dissociated state where instead of previously too caught up in physical reality, we flip into the other thing where too caught up in some other dimension of energy and light. But here, well, don't ask me to do anything here because I am in some higher dimension. Well, this is only okay as a temporary transition phase where we may at first flip flop, but we don't want to confuse that with the ultimate state. The ultimate state is not here or there. It is being fully present wherever, which means that you access these higher dimensions, higher light, your essence, and you bring it down in a balanced, integrated way in your day-to-day -day life. In fact, that shows how mature and developed and integrated you are. 
it's not this always of having the fantasy of the next retreat. I'm going to escape into this amazing place where I will be deep in peace. No, that peace has to come back to where your ordinary life is. And when you can bring that into your very, the conversation that you have with your next door neighbor or how you treat your family or how you treat people in your life and how do you go about your day when nobody is watching? How do you really feel when something difficult comes up and bubbles up from inside? It's really these day-to-day -day moments which indicate whether you have fully gotten it. And that implies good amount of work in integration, which doesn't look very glamorous, right? The integration work is, is, is tough. It's kind of work we don't feel like doing. But the fruits of that integration prepare you for embodiment. Embodiment is then actually demonstrating that, living that, what I call living as infinity. So that infinity is not something you just access here and there, uh, if you're lucky, but infinity is something you have fully embraced, recognized, reclaimed, and are fully living it. That's where we're headed. It will look very different for each person. So there's no standard formula or template, but it will look absolutely amazing when you are constantly radiating, emanating that light, being alive, being who you are. And whatever, if it's, if it's that you are a nurse, you will be emanating that truth as a nurse. If you are a businessman, you will be emanating that in your business. Life looks absolutely incredible when you reach that point. As we look around us, a lot of us may feel that we are living through some pretty incredible times. Things are getting very intense. Whether you look at the ecology or energy or transport or medicine or military or politics, every one of these areas, it feels like the temperature is rising, right? It feels like there's heat. I like to think of it as uh, when you cook certain grains, you know, you use a pressure cooker in many countries. Under the high temperature and pressure, things get cooked very fast. That's what we're going through. We're getting cooked very fast. <laughs> and there will be a delicious meal uh, once we're cooked. <laughs> but instead of turning it into a story of, oh my goodness, what's going on here? You can look at it as, wow, there is intensity. I can feel the heat. I can feel the intensity. But if you let it pass through you, knowing that nothing can ultimately harm you, nothing can hurt you because you are essence. When you let that cooking happen, you actually feel the intensity and you even feel joy in that intensity. Because you see the transformation happening and it's like, wow, this is an incredible thing happening. I see this all over the place where people are truly looking deeper with more urgency than before. I see that as a very positive indicator that people are finally ready to engage with the real truth with a capital T instead of just trying to build a good fund for retirement or just trying to focus on some aspect of community or friends or family or just my own little career. All of these things can distract us potentially. Whereas this intensity is suggesting to us, hey, do you want to go there? And all you have to do is not figure it out where the banking system is going to end up, who are the political leaders, what's going to happen. You don't need to know that. You need to simply decide, I am going to engage with this intense energy to transform myself and whoever I happen to encounter, I will support them in their process. 
that's how I look at it as wow we have this opportunity to break through to an incredibly high level of consciousness it doesn't happen all the time why don't we jump right into it not try to control not try to freak out not try to analyze it but instead go there with the depths of our being or the depths of our aliveness with open mind open heart receptive and calling upon the light of infinity to help us to lift us up and transform us